welcome back. And uh, we have with us today uh, Will Smith. And Will's our, uh, he's our director and editor here on the show. And you often see him in the, behind the cameras doing his stuff. But Will has a few things on his mind today. And we're going to be talking about uh, corporate behavior and corporate investing. And also we're going to be talking about uh, something that's sort of related to what we're talking about with the, uh, the uh, not all case and uh, what Will uh, and others are calling gaslighting and uh, showing how, how public opinion and our views are being manipulated by, by others. So welcome to the show, Will. Thanks, Will. So, okay, let's start out with uh, talking about uh, maybe some of that good news that you yeah, this is. I don't know if you remember what uh, the last time I was on the show, I was talking about how you know we we can change the uh, the way our corporations do things, but we have the, the power, but we don't have the will. So the reason I, I say that is because in every corporate charter, it says the purpose of the corporation is to increase the value to the shareholders. Well, on on uh, Sunday, this, that's their only mandate. That's their own, there's no, you know, you should do this and you should do that and you should be a good citizen. It's just increase the value to the shareholders, and we kind of depend on the courts to uh, to make sure justice and the environment's okay and everything else. Yeah. But on Sunday, the New York Times uh, published an article announcing that uh, BlackRock, which is one of the largest investment companies, they manage six trillion in pensions, and they sent a the president of. Uh, the company, Lawrence Fink, he was the founder and chief executive officer, sent out a letter to the world's largest public companies. And it's, it, as the article says, this is going to cause a big, this is a big deal. This could be a sea change for the, for the uh, capitalist world because yeah. he's saying that uh, social responsibility must be more important than it, than it currently is. He said, Companies need to do more than make profits. They need to contribute to society as well if they want to receive the support of BlackRock. And since they manage $6 trillion, that's a significant amount of money, so corporations are presumably going to uh, listen to this. So he says, society is demanding that companies, both public and private, serve a social purpose to prosper over time. Every company must not only deliver financial performance, but also show how it makes a positive contribution to society. So and he also said that many governments are failing to prepare for the future on issues ranging from retirement and infrastructure to automation and worker retraining. So as a result, society increasingly is turning to the private sector and asking that companies respond to broader societal challenges. So this is good news. I, I hope, I'm hoping it's a sea change because people pay attention to things like this, you know. Well, my, my first reaction is, and I agree, uh, you, you're not going to change corporate behavior just by wishing that they would be better because uh, we've, we've been trying that for the last 150 years. But to me, uh, in a strategy, as a corporate strategy, it's good because uh, saying that you're going to take in these other values are going to reflect well on you, and this would bring uh, you more uh, customers perhaps and, and more profits. So I can't see how they can really lose on that policy. However, uh, as a, as a cynical way to look at it, but on the other hand is that maybe it is possible that they're seeing that, that the corporations are going to have to start have more social responsibility. Well, we'll see what happens, but it, it's good news. So the next thing I wanted to talk about sort of keys in on what you were talking about earlier the, on this uh, RCMP case. It, it applies to a lot of things, but I was reading some articles on uh, what's called gaslighting, and I know you're familiar with the term because we had a conversation before the show. And the gaslighting comes from a, uh, I think it came originally from a play and then a movie where in, this, in, the, in the old days when we had gas lighting in our houses, if somebody turned on the gas in another room, all the other lights would dim slightly and this guy drives his wife crazy by lying to her continuously and pretending that there's nobody else in the house, but then going around and, and doing this as if there's somebody else in the house. So and he's he, playing with her head a so little bit. So he's playing with her head. And, and this thing is that this drives you crazy. And it's called gaslighting because it's a recognized thing that, that you have to take care of. I mean, this is a, something that will yeah. give you symptoms of PTSD, low self-esteem, depression. Uh, and 
you know, a lot of my, a, a lot of the people I meet here, we're, we're, we're fighting against uh, this stuff and, and people are depressed because nothing's happened. Yeah. And so I thought, well, let's look up and see if there isn't some kind of a, a way to apply this politically. And, I, and before I start reading this, I, I just want to say that the, um, the thing is, is that you have to remember that this is not, we're not, it's not against individuals. It's against the whole, the way the system runs. Yeah. But if we just keep doing things the way we're doing, then we're going to drive ourselves crazy. And uh, the, the thing in particular that, that I wanted to talk about is the, the RCMP case, because, I mean, it just, it looks so obvious to me yeah. that, that we've got, something isn't right here. Well, they're so, inventing a reality. They're inventing their own reality. They've invented a reality. They've and they have the weight of the government and the corporate media to bring that manufactured reality forward. And uh, others that may spend a little time trying to figure the issue out come up with the real facts. But there's nothing, the facts are entirely different than the, than the manufactured reality. So, exactly. So yeah. the question is, how, as an individual, do I keep my own mental health during yeah. a time when this is being done to me? It's just as if I'm spending my time in an abusive relationship with somebody <laughs> and I can't even see what's happening. So here are the things that you have to do. You have to remain defiant and you have to recognize that there never will be accountability. There never is going to be accountability from the government. And you can let go of the wish for things to be different and you can develop a healthy detachment. Now this is difficult because we're all in this system. It's not something that's over there. It's something that we all participate in, this uh, participatory democracy. But I'm gonna read these things. I've changed the wording from the original article which appeared in The Guardian, and this is directly applicable to, pro to politics. So I've just changed the, the wording so that it's, you can see that it's the government in, yeah. that, that, we're, that we're talking about. Defiance is key. I trust my version of reality, not the government's. I do not allow it to be altered on demand. Resistance, anger protects me because I know what I know. It can't be erased. Being defiant does not make me difficult. It makes me resilient. Then recognize that there never will be accountability. The government which is gaslighting me will never be able to see my point of view or take responsibility for their actions. They will never get it. They will never say, oh, you're right. You have a point. They're just going to run over me. So I have to protect myself from that. Let go of the wish for things to be different. The wish for things to be different is very powerful and inoculates us against the tumult. It allows us to continue to believe logic and reason will prevail eventually. We want to believe that the government will change. We want things to make sense, but they won't. You want to, I want to feel that I'm on safe ground. I have to let go of this wish because things will never make sense and I will never be heard. Then the last point is developing a healthy detachment. I have to develop certain coping mechanisms. I have to become hypervigilant about clarity. There's no room for misunderstanding. Detaching from the gaslighting does not mean total detachment. It just means distinguishing between the world of the gaslighting government and the real world. So I think that those are, those are key points that we all have to do. We all have to still exist, but we all have to realize that this bus is headed off the cliff. <laughs> so we have to do something about it for ourselves. And the driver. To keep, to keep ourselves healthy. Yeah. So, so how do you do that? Well, yeah. let's, let's just look at this RCMP case. Now, the Crown has reinstated, or has... Uh, they're appealing the decision. Right, they're appealing yeah. the decision. But here's what, here's what is written in the case. And this is, a, this is about the whole summary of the case. This bare summary does not capture the true nature of the police conduct because it was the day-to-day -day dealings with the defendants who were recorded and videotaped that demonstrate the absurd character of the undercover investigation. It's like we are in Alice in Wonderland. It's absurd. When Mr. Nuttall broke down after the failed train plan and confessed that he was not a general and could not be expected to create a workable plan, Officer A assured him that he would be taken through to the end one baby step at a time. This is truly a case where the RCMP manufactured the crime. This is not a situation where the police simply, quote, instigated, originated, or brought about the offense. 
The police took two people who held terrorist beliefs but no apparent capacity or means to plan, act on, or carry through with their religiously motivated objectives, and they counseled, directed, urged, instructed, and molded them into people who could, with significant and continuous supervision and direction by the police, play a small role in a terrorist offense. So their role was relatively small. The police were doing everything. That's right. Now, I can't believe that police sit there and really want to do this because these people are going to jail for life if the crown they, and i'm not saying that they're you know they're not innocent but the, but certainly there's there's a, a huge involvement of the police the police completely orchestrated it well, so how say, what am i supposed to do with that what, those words. what am i supposed to do with that as an individual uh -huh. how do i how does that make me feel about justice here and and what <laughs> I don't know. I mean, this is so. I have to. I have to go over these points again. I have to let go of these things. Well, and you know, say, when you think of it, well, though the justice herself, the chief justice herself, is not going to allow the RCMP and the corporate media to gaslight her. She's she she, she hasn't. She's seen the reality of the situation, and she's very clear. And nevertheless, the RCMP and the government are going to persist with their line. They have nothing else to go going for them. They have to continue to vid an alternate reality and we're and they're trying to hope that enough people will buy in, who you know, who will buy into their story. And I, I think it's important. I think there's a relationship here that that's uh, that we should be looking at is that we as citizens should refuse to be gaslighted. We just simply say, no, we know what our facts are and we're staying with them. Yeah, the thing the thing for me, Walt, is if, if I let's just say I had a really good friend. Like, let's just say that yeah. you, for example, all of a sudden you cheated me out of several thousand yeah. dollars. I would never trust you again. I would always be worried about you that that would yeah. that might happen again. And I just I wonder what are people thinking in the justice system? How how can we how can we look at them the same way when when the yeah. people within the justice this isn't somebody who's writing a letter to the editor. This is a judge yeah. who's saying that this is a complete absurd fabrication. I, 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 this, is, know, this is what the hearings showed. I mean, the evidence backs up what she's saying. And, 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 and there's nothing, there's no reason to doubt the facts as they stand. And I, this is what's so important, I think, that our viewers should remember, everybody should remember. Don't buy into you know these these stories that were being told uh, about terrorism, for instance. They, they just don't hold together, and they do create confusion in the public. People don't know what to think, and I think in the end, when people are confused, they don't take action. I think that's where you're frozen. Yeah, you don't know what the heck is going on, so you can't take a position. Perhaps you won't, you don't know how to place your vote in an election. Perhaps you don't know how, you can't make deci lifestyle decisions because you really don't know what is the truth anymore. Right. You don't know what is the truth, and and these these are people that we depend on just as for our basic. I, I don't know. I it, it just I'm still trying to deal with this, but to feel like you're in Alice in Wonderland is really strange. Yeah, and it's very hard on, on people. I know uh, uh, we want to live our lives or have, have our, be with our families. And uh, why, should we be so, why are we going to have to be so troubled? But the thing is, we know these things are going on and our governments are, are doing nasty things to us. So anyway, on that sad note, and we're going to try not to be gaslighted anymore. I think it's an important thing. So thanks a lot for coming in, Will. It's an interesting topic. It's my pleasure. And that wraps up uh, the show for this week.